Dora Amari, who has left officially the New York Post after about a decade. He's building his own media empire. How's that going, building the media empire? It, I've never had to do payroll before. It's yeah. suddenly a reality. I've always been an employee, now this new reality, but it's enjoyable. It's very exciting. Yeah, so what, what exactly are you working on? Sure, so it's, I am doing it with two other partners. Some of us come from the, uh, the right, and some of us come from a more uh, leftist milieu. Um, and we want to critique both the existing left and right, because I think they both failed, and to maybe try to forge a new fusion. And what this conference is about is trying to piece this thing together. So I guess in the broadest sense, do you think it's even possible to do it? I think a new um, kind of uh, coalition has to has to emerge. I've used the term the new right, and that includes traditional conservatives. It includes um, uh, uh, nationalists and national conservatives. It includes a kind of pure Trumpian populist as well. And I would even add uh, various people exiled from the left. All of these people... Um, you know, we're not going to agree on everything, we, but we share a critique. Something isn't working. There is a dystopian quality to life in the United States and across the West. And I think it tends to work for an elite. It increasingly doesn't work for ordinary people. And they, they want economic stability. They want a measure of cultural normality, I would say. And I think out of that, it is possible. You can, you know, ferociously disagree about what comes next. And out of that... A, a thoughtful engagement, possible to forge a new coalition. So the as, elements are there. As someone that comes from the more religious side of this, how do you say to the purely secular people, you can fit in? I think it's something that uh, you said, Dave, at your remarks here earlier, where you said that freedom without ends, in the sense, what are we for, um, has left here. An idea of, of a kind of liberalism that um, it rejects any kind of, uh, of moral authority or any account of what makes people happy. Mm -hmm. What does it mean to build a, a society where people flourish? If you reject that, um, you get a you go down a dark place. And ideologies like wokeism, in a way, are prepared to take their place because wokeism it has a moral account. Now, you and I think. It's a, it's a correct account, right. but it is a moral vision, and so it cannot be met with mere individual rights type discourse. It has to be met with a truer account of who the human person is, and religious conservatives uh, uh, play a role in that, um, and they can play a role with that not just by drawing on revelation, but just reason alone, right? Re reason as the classical understood it, has a much bigger account of okay, who's the human person, uh, how does he fit into a cosmos, um, that sort of stuff, I think, uh, again, without bringing the Bible into the picture, um, is w is where, s you know, seculars can meet uh, conservatives like me, religious conservatives like me. Yeah. Are you shocked that it's happening? It seems like it really is happening. I mean, the fact that you and I find common cause in all of this. People would ask me this a few years ago when things look especially, um, uh, uh, well, things continue to look great. Yeah. But they ask me, like, yeah. what's, what's going to happen? Do you have any optimism? And the answer I would give is that the very miserableness of our current social economic arrangements, um, uh, 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 that will awaken people because they, they have to ask themselves there must be something more to our common life together it can't it can't just be this and so the, with the particular formation that it took no i didn't know i couldn't predict that but a sense that um some liberals some leftists would break i thought i saw that coming so you live in new york yeah I live, at least for now, in California. We are here in the free state of Florida. Yeah. Do you sense that regardless of whether we can put this coalition together or not, that the states are just going to keep drifting apart, it, which in many ways is sort of how it's supposed to be? That's sort of what the founders wanted in, in some sense? See, I, I don't like that. I don't like any kind of pseudo-secessionist thoughts. I think... Because, I didn't say I like it. No, I know. It's I know. Just, it's a reality. It just sort of is what it is. Um, well, ultimately, well, that um, we have to aim for national power um, because um, they're not going to leave us alone in states where, for example, the right. regime is more sane. Ultimately, you know, they can um, uh, muscle through what their will, both at the federal level, but also because they often their power is corporate power. It's private power. 
And so as long as they have that, we don't have a countervailing power. So I, I just say, you know, it, it's not going to last. Mm. Either they're going to take over the whole or we're going to take over the whole. Right. What do you make of this Virginia situation tomorrow? I see this as a huge bellwether moment. Like, I, I, it's crazy that I have to care about a Virginia gubernatorial election. It shouldn't be that way. But for your, the purposes you're talking about, it's sort of all or nothing in a weird way. Um, I think this is huge, huge. Yeah. It's like if we can get a win here, it signals to people we're going to really push back against critical race theory. We're going to start caring about you know, parents are allowed to care about their kids again. And yeah. if, if we don't win, it's just just more ash on the heap right now. I think it's a very crucial race um, because it will confirm this theory or not, which is that that liberals, liberals in their aggression went, uh, pick one too many battles and pick the battle where it's things are very, very sensitive. And that is people's children. Yeah. Even uh, uh, people who don't think like me, don't like the thought of their kids being targeted for gender ideology and transitioning without them having a say in it, yeah. or being told that because of the color of their skin, they're inherently either a victim or a, a permanent oppressor class. People don't like that. And I think it is a good bet to think that, you know, this is where the fight back begins. And it's so appropriate because family yeah. children are, are the fundamental unit of political community. And so in defending it, you're defending the whole, as it were. So, so do, you want, do you want to make an official prediction? No, I'm not a part of that. I don't, I, don't, I don't follow polls. I have no idea. All right. Well, I think we should leave it there because we're going to pick this up tonight for a good half hour or so yeah, later. Yeah, previewed uh, our, our discussion. If you're looking for more honest and thoughtful conversations about politics instead of nonstop yelling, check out our politics playlist. And if you want to watch full interviews on a variety of topics, watch our full episode playlist all right over here. And to get notified of all future videos, be sure to subscribe and click the notification bell.